fate maps are generated by marking and tracking cells in vivo to determine how progenitors contribute to specific structures and cell types in developing and adult tissue. An advance in this concept is genetic inducible fate mapping, or GIFM, linking gene expression, cell fate, and cell behaviors in vivo to create fate maps based on genetic lineage. Hi, my name is Deborah Ellisor from Mark Services Laboratory in the Department of Molecular Biology, Cell Biology, and Biochemistry at Brown University. Today, my colleagues Ashley Brown, Liz Normand, Nowen Hagen, Steve Brown, and I will demonstrate a procedure for genetic inducible fate mapping. We use this procedure in the lab to study early brain development. We can also apply this technique to gene inactivation studies and animal models of human disease. So let's get started. In XCRE-ER MGFP embryos, MGFP lax -E is a reporter allele present in all cells represented by gray ovals. XCRE-ER, where X represents gene regulatory elements controlling CRE-ER expression, is spatially restricted to gene X's expression domain, shown in blue, and CRE-ER protein is sequestered in the cytoplasm by HSP90. In the absence of tamoxifen, the reporter will be off. Tamoxifen administration results in fate mapped cells in domain X because CRE-ER is released from HSP90, translocates to the nucleus, and removes the stop cassette from the reporter allele. Permanent and heritable recombination ensures that cells constitutively express MGFP lax -E. The combination of reporter allele, CRE-ER, and tamoxifen results in marking. When a cell population is initially marked in a primordial brain region of the embryo, based